God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never come short of his word. I've got to stop. Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. We're reading from Habakkuk, Habakkuk, whatever, chapter 3, verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundedst the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundations unto the neck. Selah. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig shall not blossom. This is the key one right here. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Amen to God's word. You know, I don't care what you're hearing on the news. I don't care what you're seeing on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, etc., etc., etc. The bottom line is God, God, God. God is. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So whatever goes down, Whatever falls through, whatever comes against, whatever rears its ugly head, seek God and him only. Seek his strength. Seek his power. Seek his love. Seek him. And with him comes provision. With him comes protection. With him comes safety. With him comes peace. With him comes instruction. Don't settle for the lies. Don't settle for the intimidation that comes across the airwaves. Because remember, the devil is the prince of the air. So you're getting so many lies mixed with truth. Depend solely on God. That's who you lean on. That's who you cry out to. That's who you reach up to. That's who you get a hold to is God. God and his precious promises. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God is a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. You have to remember God's precious promises in order not to shake and quake in the middle of this mess that's going on. Yes, we're living in the last days, but we are not to fold and collapse. We are to rise, stand, and serve God that much more, with that much more fury, with that much stronger of an anointing and boldness. We have to remember who we belong to. We have to remember who our God is and what he's capable of. 
the all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere, yeah, that God, Yahweh. Let me go back to verse 14 and reread that because that's what I see happening now with all these nations and all the powers that be. This is exactly what it looks like. The picture is painted through this verse. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Thou came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. I don't know what they're up to, but God does. And in case any of you are involved with the government, God knows and he sees what you're doing behind closed doors, what you're planning and scheming against his people. Read Psalms 46. That should comfort your heart. Now, we are going to Exodus chapter 14. Is that God paints the picture and he lets us know he already knows what's going down. See, we get surprised by what we hear, by what we see. Our knees knock. We get on the phone, talk about it, cry about it, worry about it, plan for it. We don't know what to do. Some of us are pulling our hair out by the root, and some of you are out there committing suicide. But let me tell you, baby, God knows what's coming. God knows how to equip his people. He knows how to prepare his people, and he knows how to take care of his people. Listen to this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before fire Tyre, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baalzephon, before it shall, ah, before it ye shall encamp by the sea. Now, Basically, the Lord is letting the Israelites know where to go. Mm -hmm. He's positioning them. Now, in God's eyes, he already has the plan. He knows the door where to enter, and he knows the way of escape because he is already prepared for it. But humans don't see it. So when Pharaoh looks at it, he looks at, oh, they're trapped between me and the sea. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I got these suckers. I'm getting them back. The thing that he doesn't know is that God already told Moses that was what was going to go through his mind. Why? Because God himself hardened his heart so that he can set the stage for God himself to get all the glory as he delivers his people out of the hands of the one who thinks he's in control. See, the government, the powers that be, the nations, all the politicians, the UN, all, they think they're in control, but they got another thing coming. God's got some surprises coming, y'all. And all we need to do is hide in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty and watch how he handles our enemies. All right, let's move right along. We're going to skip down to verse 6. Now he's already told his men what's going on. God's telling him this. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Hello. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamped, encamping by the sea beside Phyretira before Baalsephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. They at least had enough sense to cry to the right one. Who are you crying out to? Who are you looking for for protection? Who are you looking for to be your defense? Who are you looking for to be your provision? Hello, 
Verse 11, and they said unto Moses, Behold, there was no graven, there were no graves in Egypt, and hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it is it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand, and I say unto you, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And this is me talking now. Though the Chinese scratch their noses, and the Russians twitch their ears, and they all rub their hands together as they eagerly plan their little schemes of mice and men. Check out what God's word says to that. See the salvation of the Lord, which he shall, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold ye shall hold your peace and the Lord said unto Moses wherefore criest thou unto me speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward and I speak to God's people go forward stay in God's way answer God's call serve him with boldness don't shrink back. Don't, don't hold up a little white flag and surrender. No, don't you dare. Verse 16. But lift thou thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor unto Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots <laughs> and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Hmm. And it came, it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israelites. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, which means the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to these, which are God's people, so that the one came not near to the other all night. So they were within eye reach of each other. They could see each other. They could see each other's faces. But God put a chasm between them. Mm -hmm. And they could not come close to each other because of God's divine protection. Trust me, baby. When God's ready to protect you, can no monkey from hell touch you. You know my song, can't touch this. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the dry, made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Mm. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen, all of them, y'all. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. I love that pillar of fire. God is always our light in the midst of darkness. You notice that? And in the midst of bright daylight to the enemy, God is always night and blindness to them. And took off their chariot wheels. This is what God did to them. He took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, 
that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord, the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst, which means in the middle of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts. Of, we know what happened. They're dead. They're gone. The, the Israelites are delivered safe and free. And they're still moving forward according to this. Now, what I want to say to you, are you moving forward or are you moving backwards? Are you pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God? Or are you backpedaling? Do you have your hands to the plow? And are you looking backwards? No. No, you don't want God to say you're not worthy of the kingdom. Press forward. Look forward. Focus on God. Focus on glory. Focus on his abilities. Focus on his power. Focus on his love for you. Focus on his faithfulness. Focus on God. Because let me tell you, only through God can you get everything you need. Only through God can you be all that you can be. Only through God can you do all that you're empowered to do. He is your strength and song. He is your very present help in trouble. He is your peace in the midst of the storm. He is your high tower. He's watching over you, y'all. He is your guide. He will instruct you. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. Don't fear what's going on, please. Remember in whom you believe. Remember whose you are. And remember who God really is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all misery, pain, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, never fall short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, move in the holy way to live my life clean every day. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I've never turned back. God is protection. God is. God is. Joy in time of sorrow. God is my all and all. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional, so I'm going to stop. But you have to remember who God is, you guys. God is with us, Emmanuel. He will never fail you. Oh, God, 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 God. Joshua chapter one. And then I'm going to stop, I believe. Oh, go with me to Joshua chapter one, please. All right. Oh, my goodness. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, 
Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Woo! That's a promise right there. Not some of the days of your life, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Listen, listen, listen. You have to remember, when God says it, that settles it. God is for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. He will make you, he will make you in league with the stones, with the animals, with the beasts, everything, all nature, everything that he ordains will be at peace with you. Will work for you, not against you. When God is ready to move you here, move you there, cause you to rise up and do this do that, say this, or say that. You notice every time Moses went to Pharaoh to say, let my people go, he never got arrested. You notice that? He never got beaten. Why? Because God was with him. God was for him. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Even Pharaoh could not be against Moses. God will not allow the enemy to work against you. You heard what he said. All the days of your life. That's a serious promise, y'all. Are you willing to believe him? Or will you backpedal and bow to Pharaoh? Bow to the vat. vat bow to all of these little systems that are going down to bring you down even further and trample upon the poor even more. Or will you trust God, really trust him through the storm, through the rain, through the lightning, through the thunder, through the shaking, through the quaking, through the dark? What are you going to do? When the water gets stopped, are you going to believe God to pull water out of a rock for you? When the meat is no longer available. Are you going to read God's word and ask God's word to nourish your body since the bot, since the word of God is our meat? What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What are you going to do? What are you going to depend on? Are you going to bow to fill your belly when God can keep you full? Thank you.